gracious hosts, unique lodging, and tasty cuisine. New Mexico bed and breakfasts are New Mexico true. Our innkeepers are as special as New Mexico, and we're sharing their stories. Read about them and plan your trip at nmbba.org. Welcome, everybody. Today, we are talking about spring and early summer events and activities in Albuquerque and central New Mexico, the land of enchantment. And we are going to Botker Mansion. It's a very historic inn in the Plaza region, the Old Town Plaza region of Albuquerque. It is right off of Route 66. Uh, they have amazing history. They have amazing food. They have a beautiful garden, which we're going to talk about today. And excited to have Kathy Hyatt. Uh, her and her husband, Steve, own Botker Mansion of Old Town. And you can go to botker.com. And we also have Jake Dunlap, who's the assistant innkeeper. So welcome back, Kathy. How are you? I'm great. Thanks so much. And welcome, Jake. How are you doing? I'm doing wonderful. How are you? Doing good. I love that you're representing turquoise, you know, because oh, that always. is like the thing of Albuquerque, right, is turquoise. Always. Absolutely. Yeah. Do a lot of people that come to the B&B go to the turquoise museum? Is that like a, a bucket list thing to do for rock hounds and, you know, lovers of gems and minerals? I Yeah, I feel like it's pretty popular. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. We talked about that before, Kathy, about the history of turquoise in the region and how mm -hmm. a lot of us think we have turquoise and we don't. <laughs> That's <laughs> another part of it, right? It's like that whole understanding. So that's why you go to the museum for it. But Kathy, um, it is National Gardening Month. And um, I really wanted to talk to you about your garden because I know you're a garden and you a gardener and you have a certified backyard wildlife habitat, right? Yes, we do. Um, that is through the National Wildlife F Foundation. And basically you can do it for practically any kind of wildlife you have. Um, so we have lots of birds here. So you have to provide food, shelter, water, and nesting places. Mm. So we have some fairly large trees and, and trees and all that around us. So um, we have uh, a lot of birds in our yard. Some people can do it on their patio or even on the balcony of their apartment building if they can do all those four things. Mm. So tell everyone a little bit about the inn itself because it is historic. And I would think that they're a little surprised that you have a little garden oasis in the middle of an old town, right? Oh, actually, yeah, that's that's quite true. So the house is a uh, was built in 1912, the same year as New Mexico statehood, um, and it's an American four square, which actually had a fairly brief period of of popularity for architecture. It was between Victoria and Queen Anne, and then after that was um, bungalows like Craftsman and um, um, and Art Deco, which also had a very brief period in Albuquerque. So it's it's a different architecture from the normal architecture that you see here. We have quite a lot of um, what they call Pueblo Revival, um, which is um, made to mimic the Pueblos. So square buildings, flat roofs, um, portals on the front with the big timber posts, um, vigas that hold up the ceiling. Um, so they can be quite beautiful and they last here. So um, we have a lot of uh, mostly that type of architecture in New Mexico. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about your rooms, because I know you've got the Route 66 room, which is going to be really popular because isn't, well, I know it's popular and Route 66 is like really popular, but this anniversary is coming up. So I think you're going to have a hard time having that open for people to even book anymore. <laughs> it's going to be, it's going to be quite a year, right? When, when is that anniversary? Um, it's in, in, in uh, 2026. So Route 66 was established um, in 1926, um, and I forget how many miles it is. It starts in Grant Park, basically in Chicago, and goes through eight states, um, mm -hmm. even clipping off a like 12 mile corner of Kansas, and then ends up at Santa Monica Pier in California. So, um, and um, it became, when people started having um, available money, discretionary income, if you will, um, to travel, and then Route 66, and then the, the television program helped a lot too. Um, but it became um, a road trip for people to go across the country and see, particularly from back east, 
uh, landscape and culture and all that that they had never been exposed to before. Um, and there were, of course, a lot of Route 66 motels that sprang up. Um, a, quite a few of them are still around in Route 66 landmarks. So those are being actually um, addressed, refurbished if, if they can. Um, there's even some new building that is going on now that is made to look retro Route 66. Oh, wow. So we have uh, a motel in Albuquerque. So Central Avenue goes almost 20 miles all the way through Albuquerque um, from the East End to the West End. And there was an old motel that had gotten a little tired and right on Central Avenue, they've just refurbished the whole thing and they built a, um, I haven't been in it yet. It's only just recently opened sort of a, uh, is that like a meeting center or something actually built onto the front corner of the property and it's very retro. It looks like 1950s, oh, cool. 1960s sort of thing. Um, so they're doing things like that. We have a restaurant that has just refurbished its space and put a patio on the outside. And it looks sort of, it looks a little retro as well. Um, mm. And then they're working on um, refurbishing uh, neon signs and, um, you know, doing things like putting plaques on landmarks and things. I think you can expect to see quite a bit of that going on in Albuquerque for the next couple mm -hmm. of years that they're gonna be looking at everything along Route 66 and what is it that people wanna know about? What is it they wanna see? And they're gonna start cool. you know, basically putting together these, um, probably at the very least a self-guided tour of things along Route 66 in Albuquerque. And then isn't that Neon Museum opening up or is it open yet? It the is neon not sign? yet. Um, it's a work in progress. They're still collecting signs. Um, so it is, uh, it's an interesting thing that the city of Albuquerque, so while, the, while an old motel may have been torn down, um, the neon sign out front got left and those are called orphan signs. And they want those to stay as a landmark. So what the city has done um, is they have designated those as um, city landmarks. So they can't be torn down. They need to be refurbished and those are the ones that they're looking at and I think for a while they even had a program where you could adopt an orphan sign and have the neon refurbished and read and um, because it's uh, neon is not inexpensive no so it's... it can be pretty pricey to refurbish them and get them working again we actually have a sign a company um, he's in Knob Hill he's got a storefront and he creates neon signs but he also refurbishes them it's called absolutely neon it's really a fun place to go in. So there's that. And I know that uh, probably they will be working on getting that neon sign museum um, up and running before all of these um, anniversary events happen. And things, oh, wow. and people really, I, I think there are gonna be people coming to Albuquerque and all along Route 66 in droves. It's gonna be a, a very big deal. I know, and your room is going to be booked, 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 booked. <laughs> it's such a cool travel themed, and you and it overlooks Route sixty six. You know, it does, and that. that's that's if you see behind us, there is a private sitting room to this room, okay. um, and it does overlook Central Avenue, which is Route sixty six, and there is a bus stop right out there, and it's very retro looking. So, mm -hmm. um, the city yeah. is being um, um, observant, um, thinking that's ahead great. about what things need to look like. Um, mm. along Central Avenue. That's exciting. So let's talk about the rooms. We love your rooms. And, you know, you get treats when you check in too, by the way, people. This is, you know, Nancy and I've stayed there. It was about three years ago, I think. Three, uh -huh. something like that. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a delicious experience. And so I want to touch on the rooms. Do, either, do, do you guys have a favorite room? Jake, do you have a favorite room at the end? I do have a favorite room at the end. It's upstairs. It's our Franz Huning room. And Specifically, it's my favorite because there's a clawfoot tub in the bathroom. Oh, and there is Ooh. nothing like a clawfoot tub. Yeah, see, this is the thing you get in bed and breakfast, those kind of specialty touches and also yes. the preservation of history, right? Because a lot of people toss those kinds, but there are, that's an experience when you when you travel to be able to be in a clawfoot tub, you know, so I yeah. like that. Right. And we do have people who reserve specific rooms. So we have two rooms that have the clawfoot tubs. And then we have one room um, that actually has a jacuzzi tub. And there are people that um, 
reserve those rooms specifically because they want to have a big, deep soaking tub and just relax and enjoy themselves. And some people I've asked them and they said, oh, because my apartment, I only have a shower and I've oh. always wanted a tub. So they come and they reserve the room with the big tub. That's cool. That's, you know, what I was thinking about, because like New York City, the apartments and things are really tiny. Mm -hmm. In fact, I have a friend in New York City and um, he has a clawfoot tub in his bathroom. I mean, his, his kitchen, because oh, yeah. okay. because they're, they're so small. Mm -hmm. Some well, of the New apartments. York, you put it where you can. <laughs> I know. So he has a, a bathtub in his kitchen, but that's not what you're going to get at, at the end. But but this is, you know, part of it is you, going to bed and breakfast is that relaxation time. And it's mm -hmm. also National Stress Awareness Month. So this is a way to de-stress. Go soak in a tub. Don't be so stressed out go on a vacation, have someone else make breakfast for you. You can walk right outside the inn and go to a restaurant. You can go mm -hmm. to attractions. You've got the botanical garden around the corner from you, which I love that botanical garden. It's mm -hmm. got that, that Japanese garden talking about like, just chill, mm -hmm. <laughs> just chill out. So I love that. But Kathy, do you have a favorite room? Oh, that's a tough one. Every time it's like choosing my favorite breakfast <laughs> and we can have different breakfasts and I'll say, oh, this is my favorite. And I'm like, wait, I say that about several others as well. Uh, I hear that at least three times a week, at least three times a week. This is my favorite breakfast. Oh, wait. Um, so <laughs> this room is a favorite of mine. Um, I love the sitting room. It's just it because it looks out on the front yard and the leaves are all almost almost out now we've got little green buds and some oh, cool. leafing out so in about a week everything will be leafed out um and um it's it's sunny on the corner we've got blinds so when it gets real sunny and you want it a little bit not quite so bright you can you can uh, tilt the blinds back um and in spite of being right on central avenue and and the whole roof 66 thing um it's still fairly quiet um mm -hmm. So it's got like a little area where you have your dining table, like a, a private little table area, I remember. Or something. Well, we've got a table in here. That's what we're sitting That's at. That's what it is. Oh, okay. Um, we've got, it's a, it's a gate leg table. It's an antique. Um, mm -hmm. And we have that because um, we'll, we will um, often get people traveling on business and they kind of need just a nice, quiet, lovely room with a place to work on their laptop. Yeah. You know, we don't always want to have the laptop on the lap, you yeah. know, when you're working, uh, working. <laughs> no, I get that. It's just, and it's a, and it's a pleasant view to sit here. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes I wonder if it's a little, I would get distracted sitting here working. Well, Nancy and I up, had wine time looking there. Out the window. I, know, I know we had wine time there at, at that mm -hmm. table. Yeah, right. that was, that was our thing. It was like, okay, I'm coming downstairs with for wine. And um, yeah, cause it's a nice place to sit and, and your garden too, you know, that's the other part to me is just being, having a little oasis area, but what is your favorite breakfast, your recent breakfast oh that's not the question i thought you were going to end up with in this conversation um <laughs> well you said talking about favorite breakfast so <laughs> and jake i'm going to ask you too what's the favorite breakfast uh here recently it's been our blue cornmeal pancakes you stole mine because well and we've updated the recipe oh we're serving them now with a red chili maple syrup that we make in house and it what? really enhances Ooh. the flavor of the blue cornmeal and brings out the pinyon nuts and it's now a much I want richer sausage too sausage oh, that. It's, yeah it's a Ooh. really wonderful balance of flavors mm -hmm. oh yeah that's and that's new mexico it's yeah. new mexico true yeah we try to put elements of new mexico flavor and spices and ingredients in a lot of the things that we do but not all the time. Mm -hmm. um, so one of my favorites is um, it's an asparagus and goat cheese quiche. And we serve mm -hmm. it with um, lemon poppy seed scones with lemon um, oh. icing, which is wonderful. Oh. And then um, usually he makes a uh, tomato salad with that. So cherry tomatoes with olive oil mm -hmm. and nice herb seasoning on it. Um, I just, asparagus says spring to me. I don't know why. Oh yeah, asparagus. it does. And a key. Asparagus too. and lemon. Well, asparagus for some reason. It was lemon. And lemon, yeah. So and champagne. <laughs> and champagne. <laughs> I'm like, let's have mimosas now. Can okay. you do mimosas with a little lemon? Like I haven't, haven't gone there yet. <laughs> no, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't think no. Mimosa could do a bellini. Well, you have a lot of agriculture in Al Albuquerque, and that's something unique for people to know about. And that you do have wineries, you do have farms, you do have 
it's a growing area. And, and a lot of times when people think about New Mexico or Arizona, they think it's one big desert and it's not. Like yeah, it's not. Desert. It's not. So we're uh, we have a couple things going for us. We're in the Rio Grande River Valley. So the Rio Grande actually starts just in southern Colorado and goes all the way through New Mexico. And it is the source of life. Um, everything here relies on water. So, of course, farming developed in the Rio Grande River Valley. We also have a lot of dry crops. So there's a huge pecan industry. Um, chili, of course, and um, and also things like pinto beans and things like that. Um, speaking of wineries, okay, we have a lot of vineyards now all through the valley because vineyards, um, the grapes are like Mediterranean climate. So they want Ooh. warm and sunny. They want some water, but they also want a little dryness. So we've got a lot of vineyards that are, that are coming up. And since you were here, we now have two wine tasting rooms in Old Town. Wow. I don't think they were cool. here when you no. when you visited with us. No. So Old Town has gotten um, quite lively, believe it or not. Um, it started off, uh, you know, it's a tourist area, but there are so many things to do around. Um, and um, Old Town is a little bit more historical in aspect. Mm -hmm. but, um, I like it. But it, it is a it is a great place. Um, but you There's need a art good and. Oh. You need a good blend of all of that, though. So we've got the art and the um, jewelry and pottery and rugs and crafts and um, shops from Mexico with Mexican art and pottery as well. But the 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 two wine tasting rooms and we've mm. got two tap rooms and they've just brought mm. a different element of activity to Old Town. Mm -hmm. nice. um, so one of them, um, the outpost is a tap room and they're on the second floor overlooking the plaza. So oh wow, it's, that's cool. It's turned out to be a fabulous place where people can just sit and enjoy local beers and see what's going on in the plaza. And of course, in April, we start having live entertainment out on the plaza. Oh, that's so cool. I yeah, love the it plaza. It is very, very cool. Yeah. Yeah. So now you're gonna have live music. So this is all steps from the end again, which is so you know, if you've been driving a while, you just you don't wanna do it again. You don't mm -hmm. even want to get in the car sometimes. You just wanna walk. We're, and if you're going through the wine bar, that's probably a good thing. Yeah, we are literally 300 home. feet from the plaza. So you can park your car and leave it parked there your entire stay if you want to. Walk everywhere around Old Town. We've got great restaurants, things to do. Um, and just never get back in your car if you don't want to. That's cool. And then you do have all these natural areas for people to explore, too. So if you're active, if you want to, there's bicycle trails, there's mm -hmm. Petroglyphs National Monument. I always have to bring it up because I love that. Mm -hmm. um, you've got a lot of park areas and a ton of public art that are connected to the parks and just there's public art. I mean, how many pieces do you think you have in Albuquerque? Oh, I remember that I map and I thought we could do it, but I can't even like, guess. And there's more since hundreds. you've been here. So there's um, you know, you can do um, walking tours of like the mural art downtown and public sculptures. And the city tries to put public art um, basically in every project that it does. So cool. they've renovated, they've done some renovation along Second Street up. Um, it parallels the Rio Grande River up through the North Valley. Mm -hmm. So they've put in um, a multi-use trail path up there along se Second Street. Um, and they've put some um, public art along there. And even when they build bridges and things, they don't just build a concrete bridge with just concrete embankments and, and leave it at that. There's always an element of art in it. So mm -hmm. um, there are some that have like different kind, different colors of tile Mm -hmm. um, so they'll tile the embankment and it's an art piece in different colors. Um, there are some that have, um, oh, what do I want to say? Like, not quite like sculptures, but uh, depictions of animals and things in them. Um, there's, so there's always, and even, even the big eye, the big interchange mm -hmm. between Interstate 40 and Interstate 25, which is the very center of Albuquerque, even in that big overpass, they've got a turquoise blue line of trim mm -hmm. that goes all the way around the edges of the railing. And it's just, it's amazing. It's attention to detail too. It makes it feel special. You know what I mean? Yeah. That people yeah. care. And, and Jake, do you have any uh, places to recommend for art, for art lovers? Um, 
I'm involved a lot More in the events. theater community here, which oh, is cool. super vibrant. Um, and really? actually, in June, what's coming up is the big New Mexico Shakespeare Festival. And so oh, cool. they're a publicly funded theater festival that happens at an outdoor venue here in Albuquerque. Um, cool. And it's it's one of the, I believe there are 14 free Shakespeare festivals across the country. And we're one of the only ones west of the Mississippi. Really? Um, and it happens, yeah, it happens at our New Mexico Veterans War Memorial, which is one, a really beautiful memorial. So if people haven't seen that, just to go see that memorial is really fantastic. But they have this wonderful outdoor amphitheater and you get to see the Sandia Mountains in the background. Ooh. And the shows always happen kind of just after sunset. It's a really beautiful Ooh. setting for outdoor theater. People bring oh, picnic cool. baskets and just really enjoy themselves. It's a lot of fun. And then what about the theater scene in general in Albuquerque, aside from the festival, which sounds amazing? It is massive here because the movie industry has moved in. So now we have all of these wonderful actors and directors and people who are spending time mm. here. And we have theaters across town. We have musical, like a musical theater Southwest, which specifically just does musicals for their entire season. We have kind of experimental new wave theaters. We have improv groups that run around. Oh, we have classic traditional theater. Um, there's Opera Southwest as mm -hmm. well, which, mm -hmm. I mean, we have the Santa Fe Opera in Santa Fe, mm -hmm. which is world-class opera. And then mm -hmm. there's Opera Southwest here, which also does massive shows and they do a really wow. good job, mm -hmm. so. Well, and then on top of it, isn't flamenco is a big deal, flamenco in Albuquerque. Yes. Yes, mm -hmm. we have Magic. several major flamenco houses that do, and they range from doing stuff with kids to all the way up through, you know, seniors and such. So there's no wow. set age range. It's really there fantastic. Are, I think at least three and maybe four uh, major flamenco venues um, that do performances on a regular basis. We also have the National Institute of Flamenco here in Albuquerque. Mm -hmm. Albuquerque has the largest presence of flamenco outside of Spain. And That's they amazing. for their flamenco festival, which takes place in June for about a week, a little over a week, I think it's like two weekends and then the week in between, um, they do bring in international flamenco performers for that festival. And they also, in addition to have the paid performances that people go to, they also do put on several um, free performances for the public. So they um, will have a performance here on the plaza um, wow. on one of those evenings and have free flamenco. And the city itself also um, pays for live entertainment on the plaza, um, usually cool. on Saturday, like Friday evenings and Saturday afternoons and sometimes on Sundays, um, that they will pay to have um, entertainers come to perform on the on the gazebo in the plaza. And um, um, often enough, some of those are flamenco performances. That is exciting to me. You know, mm -hmm. from, now I want tapas and wine. <laughs> and we have some really good tapas there, restaurants here, too. Say, there are some really fantastic tapas bars here. Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, see, yeah. we're, we're getting better and better. Like, and food mm -hmm. food halls, we can talk about food halls. That's a, another thing that you have. The, is the uh, sawmill? The one closest to us, there are several in Albuquerque. The one closest to yeah. us um, is walking distance from here. It's less than a 10 minute walk. Um, and it's called Sawmill Market. Um, oh, and it. it was it um, it's in a renovated uh, lumber warehouse. Um, and my 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 husband's family knows that because they were in the construction business. And so they said, oh, yeah, that was Paxton Lumber. Um, and it was abandoned. It was vacant. I mean, it was owned, but it was vacant for a number of years and they refurbished it. And it is a fantastic food hall. Um, I don't know how many different vendors they've got in there. Probably there three, was a lot. I mean, there was even people awesome. with flowers, oh, yeah. flowers. I mean, there was crafters. There was yeah. a beer the, bar, New Mexico sushi, beer bar. There's a yeah. great coffee bar. There's a pastry place, a Peruvian place um, that we went to. Yeah, there's 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 a there's a new taco place. Mm -hmm. um, there there my one of my personal favorites is a place called Neko Neko, and it's Japanese. Um, basically like a Japanese style waffle cone, except the cone oh. is fake, is shaped, it's it's a waffle cone, but it's um, in the shape of a fish with a big open mouth. And that's what they put the ice cream in. Um, <laughs> so and the, the second Sounds we saw that, because we lived in Northern Japan for almost three years. 
And the second we saw that, we just cracked up because we said, oh, that is so Japanese. <laughs> That's <laughs> it's cool. Really good. Yeah, it's really good. And of course, they have, um, oh, they have like a, a margarita place there. Um, they've got all kinds of foods, everything from noodle bar to pizza to, you know, you name it. I like it in there. It's like a theme park for foodies. It yeah. is. It is. And it's a great <laughs> place to go when you have a, a party of people and everybody wants something very different. That's a, that's a really good point. You know, really, it's it's a good mm -hmm. and, and it's just fun. Like every time you go there, you can do something different, you know, and, and that's what I liked right. about it. And if it's a 10 minute walk, you know, you, you get to walk it off a little bit when you come back to the inn. You know. <laughs> that's true you might need it you might need that you know so some other events i think kathy you're saying that there's a garden event or tour or festival uh, the corrales garden tour um so corrales in like may june time period um has a couple of big events so they have a corrales art studio tour um i can't quite remember i think that might be in may um because they have a lot of artists who live up in corrales and so they will um, open their studios for people to come in and watch oh, cool. them actually doing their art, whether they're um, doing sculpture or pottery or weaving or painting or whatever. Um, and they get to come in and see their studios and their art. Um, and then of course the entire village um, of Corrales um, um, has things going on. So, you know, the restaurants will be doing special things and, and all of that. It's, it's a, it's just a, kind of a big all village festival. And then um, they also have the Corrales Garden Tour. And I've been on three or four of those. So mm -hmm. different um, homeowners in Corrales um, will um, open up their gardens and sign up to be on this garden tour. And there's usually about eight or 10 of them. And so you can see everything from the wonderful English country garden look from mm -hmm. somebody who has a place quite near the river and has access to an acequia with a lot of water and stuff, all the way up to a more um, native landscaping garden um, up on the west, they call it the sand hills above Corrales. It's in a drier climate, but the views from up there are spectacular. And so their garden is more about um, native landscaping and the plants that do well up there in full sun and all that. And the one I went to had some amazing mm. art in their garden. So, mm. um, so that's a, that's a really, it's like going in the, the old homes tour. Um, oh, I like it. Always fascinating as well. It's yeah, because it gives you ideas and then you mm -hmm. get to learn things like native plants and, you know, cause I think a lot of people think native plants aren't beautiful, but they are. You no, know, there's such a wide variety here and they do mm. quite well. Um, yeah, you don't so have you just, to baby them except for the first two years, right? Yeah, the couple, the first couple of years, of course, you know, maybe you, you have to give them more water and more attention than you would normally have to do once they get mature. But so the, um, you know, the the uh, landscape beds outside of our front gates, I've put mm -hmm. more of the native landscaping in there and plants that do well because it faces west and it's in full sun. So mm -hmm. um, learning about which plants do really, really well in that kind of environment. Um, and they're all starting to come up now. I planted some new ones last year, so I'm waiting to see um, what comes up and how well established they get. I did see some yarrow. I also watch what Ooh. the city does in its landscaping. So mm. when they put, when they renovate a street, when they have like a landscape planter down the middle of it, I pay attention to what they put in there because the city wants to minimize its own use of water and mm -hmm. they want to put in plants that will do well with minimal care. So I discovered um, yarrow um, and it does quite well in full sun and, um, mine is already starting it's to pretty. bloom. So I'm very pleased with that. And I put, oh, some that's new cool. ones in, I put some new ones in last year and they're, they're, they're coming up and doing quite well. I, I love, you know, the high desert, like where you are. So, you know, there's like the red yuccas are my favorites. Those, um, the, it, because they're not like the big full, yeah, I love the yucca plants, but mm -hmm. or yucca, depending on how you want to say it, but there's the red ones and they're like little red spikes and and they have like some of them have like a red exterior of the flower and it's just pretty it's pretty i like them. oh we have so many varieties of of all of those sorts of plants and it's agaves cool. as well um, and it's different if you come from back east it's like a night and day difference you know if you're coming from back is. east or somewhere different it's like 
because people don't think you can grow things and that's so not true and I, that's what i love about your botanical garden too i mean that's mm -hmm. that's a cool place it's it's yeah. a really fun way to sp i would go there like in the morning as plants start to open up yes nice yes and the butterfly garden scroll. will be open in the summer um so i mean you have to mm -hmm. wait until the butterflies hatch and come out and stuff but um it's really it's like, amazing come on to get out with the it butterfly garden. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah that's cool yeah. Cool. We're, we're at 5,000 feet too, which makes a good bit of difference. So mm -hmm. at this higher elevation, um, we are colder in this in the winter than than people would think. Although Albuquerque tends to not get much snow, we get, we're still getting snow up in the mountains. We'll have a, a storm front that comes through and drops the temperature, and they'll get you know eight inches. Um, um, we don't get that much in Albuquerque, but it does tend to make Albuquerque much more temperate. So things will grow here because we don't get quite so flaming hot as um, as some people might think. Um, and they do quite well here. Um, mm. So it's, I mean, we get into the high nineties in the summer and we'll hit a few days over a hundred, but pretty much it's, it's pretty reasonable. And, you know, you get up early, you do your yard work or whatever you're gonna do outside. Um, and you can even be out in the middle of the day, but you know, mm. stay, in the, stay in the shade is good. Don't, don't do heavy exertion in the middle of the heat. Um, sure. and drink a lot of water. And then if you drink a lot of water, you're allowed to have that extra wine. I'm just saying. That's <laughs> right. I'm just going, I'm just going there. Okay. So I want to ask each of you, okay, spring is in full gear and we're easing into summer, early summer. So between the two seasons, if you are a guest at the end, what would you want to do for the day? Um, just what would be your idea of like a perfect day in Albuquerque. So let's start with you, Kathy. Perfect day. And you could go all the way till dinner time so you can shout out a restaurant or two. Oh my. Um it depends on um what it is your interests are. So some people like museums more, um, in which case I always recommend the Albuquerque Museum of Art and History. Um, it actually owns an original Georgia O'Keeffe, which you look at it and you'll immediately know that that is the real deal. That's a real Georgia O'Keeffe. Um, and amazing collection of art and history as well. Um, and then the Indian Pueblo Cultural Center is also a museum, but it, it talks about the 19 Pueblos, Pueblos of New Mexico um, and has art and artifacts. And they have a wonderful restaurant called the Indian Pueblo Kitchen. Um, so it's Basically, they try to do um, a lot of Native American foods, um, and it's also kind of a fusion of New Mexican food because we're all blended in together that way. But you will see um, some recipes with blue cornmeal, um, bison, the different squashes and beans and things like that, but it is a really fantastic restaurant. Um, and um, and they also have members of the different pueblos um, do dances on the weekends on Saturdays and Sundays. So there's that. Uh, the Sandia Peak Tram um, is oh that's a yeah a spectacular view from um, Sandia Peak, um, and that's definitely worth the trip. So those are my three really iconic ones. And then um, depending on what your interest is, as far as you want to drive along Route 66, or you want to go to the Botanic um, Garden is also, a, a really good Botanic Garden is fantastic no matter what season you go, even in the middle of winter. Yep. A really good garden has good bones. So even though they might not have the flowers and the leaves and everything out that you um, would normally think about a Botanic Garden, it's the structure and all the things that they've got in there. And they've got a big, um, the Japanese garden and the koi pond and the cactus houses and things like that. It's always great to go to the, um, the botanic garden. Um, and then you can end your day with a fantastic meal at high noon. And I think they have the best margaritas in town, which is never a bad way to end your day. Um, um, high noon has been there since 1974. It's family owned and they're, they they oh. are amazing food. So that's one of my favorites. Wow, it sounds like a busy day. Flowers, it can be a busy day. There's a ton culture. of stuff. So, so yeah, on our website, a... we have itineraries. Yes. And so for people who say, what can I do if I only have one day in Albuquerque? What can I do if I have two days, three days, four days? So if you stay here at the Bodker Mansion and make it your home base, you can start with whatever, you know, the, the top iconic must do things in Albuquerque. And then after that, you can branch out into things and you just get to more of a special interest thing. So 
even if you're into quilting, we have fabric stores and quilt stores here and you can indulge in um, Southwest looking fabrics, things like oh. that. Um, you can go on um, some walking tours, walking self walking tours around um, some of the uh, historic homes here close into the downtown area. I mean, we've got some fabulous historic houses and all the way from, mm. you know, the, the small New Mexico style, Pueblo style houses um, from the 1800s through Victorian and Queen Anne and Craftsman. And, That's and amazing. I love um, that. I love that. You have that diversity. What about you, Jake? What's your perfect day? I would say starting with a nice hike in our East Mountains. Earlier, okay. you mentioned the petroglyphs, which are out west of town, but our East Mountains, where the Sandia Tram is, has the, mm -hmm. that hiking is second to none. You know, you can either take a nice easy trail, you can do a harder trail if you're more experienced, and it's it's a good a good blast. It's beautiful country, beautiful scenery, and you can get out and do something like that early in the morning. Maybe grab coffee for lunch somewhere because we have amazing local coffee shops. I mean, oh, okay. Just Good. any local coffee shop, I would highly recommend. Stay out of the Starbucks. Go local. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, yeah, yeah. We we're not yeah. we're not here. Yeah, um, exactly. And then along Central, which is Route sixty six, there's a really fantastic selection of antique stores, um, okay. and just different little like antique malls and different stores where you can find vintage furniture, you know, retro from the fifties, you can go back even farther. Cool. And that's one of my favorite things to do is because I is appreciate if, antiques day today. Did you know that? Yeah, as we yeah. record? I didn't know that, but I'm definitely <laughs> hey. a person that does. I don't, none yeah. of my furniture is new. I don't do it. It's, you know, no, no. I love that old kind of lived in feel to it. But so. you're keeping history alive with buying antiques. I yes, think. absolutely. You're keeping yeah. stories then, alive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I'd probably cap off the evening with a good show somewhere. You know, we've got, uh -huh. like I said, we have fantastic local theater. We have Pope Joy Hall at UNM, which brings mm -hmm. in Broadway tours. Mm -hmm. A while back, they upgraded Pope Joy Hall so that they could fit bigger shows in. As oh, uh, wow. Yeah. And so we get fantastic Broadway tours here. We get The Lion King and Wicked and all those big shows. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's oh, yeah. going on in Albuquerque, man? It, oh, it seems it's like happening. it's just... But growing in a in a positive way, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. When you hear about growth, people go, "Oh no, 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 no!" But I mean, like it's adding to like quality of life mm -hmm. for locals and then for visitors coming in too. That there's always something to see and do. Every time I go on the visitor bureau website, I'm like, I can't keep up. <laughs> there's <laughs> no. a ton. There's Try a living ton. here; it's a lot. Well, that's fun. That's fun. Yeah. So yeah. everyone, go to botger.com, B-O-T-T-G-E-R, botger.com, uh, to make reservations and learn more and see those itineraries. Um, but if you guys are booked, if, if everyone goes to nmbba.org, which is the New Mexico Bed and Breakfast Association, you do have some other inns in the neighborhood, <laughs> right? In the big neighborhood. You've got one that's f a farm style and then one, the Sleepy Lobo Inn, which is uh, historic inn as well so there's other inns to check out and you guys all mm -hmm. work together too right mm -hmm. yeah that's really cool very cool well thank you so much for being back on the show all right thanks for having us nice to see you jake nice to see you take care everyone all right bye gracious hosts unique lodging and tasty cuisine new mexico bed and breakfast are new mexico true our innkeepers are as special as New Mexico, and we're sharing their stories. Read about them and plan your trip at nmbba.org.